Hello and welcome back to the channel. Alright, so today we are going to be diving into another root tutorial, this time for one of the factions from the Riverfolk expansion, which was just recently released for this uh, digital version of root. The Riverfolk factions launched alongside the base factions uh, with the base game as a stretch goal for the Kickstarter and they just recently got released for digital which is exciting so let's go ahead and hop into the first of the two tutorials with the lizard cult all right the lizard cult wishes to spread our gospel throughout the woodland you must seek outcasts and acolytes to crusade for your cause and defend your sanctum but your fight is not with tooth and claw alone. Tending to your gardens reveals a path to victory through mysterious rituals. All right, so the cat's going to set up in that bottom left clearing again. You start the game with four humble warriors and a garden building in the corner clearing opposite the Marquise de Cat Keep. In addition, you place a warrior in each clearing adjacent to your starting garden. And I believe that if the Eerie are also in the game, since the Eerie start in the corner opposite the Marquis, the Lizards will just start in one of the other two corner clearings. During daylight, you perform ritual actions by revealing cards from your hand. Using the Recruit Ritual, you may reveal a card from your hand to recruit a warrior in a clearing matching its suit. So the river folk, oh not the river folk, sorry. The lizard cult take uh, a lot of their actions in a unique way compared to any of the other factions we've seen so far. And that's by revealing the cards. So as you can see, they can't be used for rituals again until your next turn. So you're not discarding them, you're just simply showing the rest of the players in the game which cards you have, and then you're able to use them again. So you're able to sort of, throughout the game, build the hand of cards that you want that are gonna be best for you to succeed in the game. So let's try another ritual using a different card in our hand. We're gonna use the build ritual to reveal a mouse card and play the garden in a matching clearing that we rule. So it's going to be this top right mouse clearing here. You automatically rule any clearing where you have a garden. Even non-believers are in awe of their divine properties. So that is a really useful mechanic uh, for the lizards to have. The gardens can be used to score points with the score ritual. So we're going to take a quick look at gardens here. So we uncover a draw bonus when we have two gardens of the same suit on the map. And obviously doing so will increase the cards we draw during evening. And in general, as the Lizard Cult, you're not going to want to establish more than two gardens of any suit. Otherwise, it's too difficult to defend them all. And uh, even expanding further on that, you really only want two gardens of two different suits, not all three. Uh, although if, if there's some sort of game where the other factions have low military presence or they aren't really threatening you, uh, it could be possible for you to risk it and go for it. But in general, you want to just build, try to stay to building two gardens in two different suits. So the more gardens you have on the map with a suit, the more points you score when using the score ritual. So I'm sure we'll get to this later in the tutorial, but one of the issues with having a lot of gardens is they become undefended and like that's not great for any faction, but it's especially not great for the lizard cult because when a garden is removed, the lizard cult have to discard a random card. And that can be quite damaging for them because, like I said earlier, they're drawing cards and discarding the ones they don't want over the course of the game so that they can get the five cards in their hand that are best for them each uh, turn. You know, they're trying to 
put together the optimal hand and if they're forced to discard a random card that can really disrupt their plans so we're going to use the score ritual to discard a mouse card and gain two victory points this is a unique and powerful ritual that requires you discard the card you used rather than reveal it you may perform the score ritual only once per suit each turn yeah, that's something that uh, my table actually missed when we were playing our first game with the lizards. <laughs> the Our lizard player scored mouse suit three or four times in the same turn and just completely ran away with the game. <laughs> we were like, whoa, the lizards are crazy. And it turns out we were just playing the game wrong. Happens to the best of us. The cards you revealed for rituals are now returned to your hand. Carefully managing the suits in your hand is key to the cult's success. Alright, and we're going to draw a couple bird cards. Time to kick these zealots back to the Stone Age. On guard. Let's see about that, Marquise. Oh, 2-2. Two, two. Alright. One cat left standing in the clearing. These whiskered heathens have dealt a blow to our warriors. Thankfully, our revenge ability allows us to transform our fallen defending warriors into acolytes. The outcast determines the clearing suits you can interact with using your acolytes. Choosing mouse will allow us to wage war against enemies in mouse clearings this turn. In a typical game, you will choose the initial outcast suit during setup, but the cult makes exceptions for true believers like you. So what they're saying is uh, we're only able to manipulate the outcast because it's the tutorial. Normally the way it works is uh, all cards that are discarded over the course of the end of from the end of your turn to the start of your next turn whichever is the most common suit discarded uh, is the next outcast suit for your next turn and if there's a tie it stays on the one that it uh, was on previously even if that su uh, suit was not involved in the tie and was the lowest one now that we have an outcast and enough acolytes, we can perform conspiracies during birdsong. Conspiracies are a set of conflict-oriented actions that use acolytes instead of the cards in your hand. So we're going to spend two acolytes to use the Crusade Conspiracy. This will allow you to move two warriors from a clearing, matching the suit of the outcast to battle in an adjacent clearing. Okay. Can, we can move up to all of them. It's a regular move, but they want us to just move two. And we're going to attack the cats, since they are the only other faction in this game. These wackos again? A fistful of steel should show them who's boss. I don't know, you're outnumbered. Yep. 2 0. This burning pyre of sawdust, please the gods. I thought they only uh, worshipped one god. The dragon god. Because of your hatred of birds, your bird cards can't be used as any suit for, for performing rituals. Instead, they are used for a unique ritual called sacrifice. So, bird cards are not wild for the lizards. Which is why it's very important that you keep a diverse hand of cards so that you can take actions in all of the suits, especially the suits in which you've established gardens. You want to try and be scoring your gardens each turn, ideally, so that you can keep up with the rest of the faction scoring. Let's reveal bird cards for the sacrifice ritual to transform warriors in your supply into more acolytes that can be used for conspiracies. So we can reveal a bird card 
for a sacrifice to get one acolyte, and we'll reveal our other bird card to get a second. Our rituals offer flexibility in where to recruit and build on the map. Let's recruit to a new area of the map now. Yep. So the lizards are the first faction that do not recruit at a building. So they don't recruit at their gardens. They can just recruit wherever by revealing a card of the matching suit. They just sort of pop up out of nowhere, creep out of the forest when people aren't paying attention. And then we're going to reveal a bunny card to add a garden to the clearing where we destroyed the cat's sawmill. Gardens matching the suit of the outcast contribute towards crafting during evening. Use their crafting power to score root T. Yeah, so that makes the lizard's crafting power uh, pretty weak because they are completely at the whim of the outcast suit to determine what they can craft on any given turn. All right, so used and discarded cards from all players go to the Lost Souls pile rather than the discard pile. The most common suit of these Lost Souls will determine the suit of the outcast at the start of your turn. And so the only card discarded during our turn was the Root T. Cat's gonna craft a smuggler's trail, so they're discarding another bunny card. Enemy cards go to Lost Souls pile as well. Watch out, even a careful plot to control the outcast suit can be disrupted by clever opponents. Certainly can, adds another layer of things to pay attention to when you're taking your turn against the lizards. And then at the end of our turn, the Lost Souls pile is, or at the start of our turn when we establish the outcast, the cards on the Lost Souls will then move to the discard pile. At the start of your turn, the most common suit in the Lost Souls pile, ignoring birds, determines the new outcast, and then the Lost Souls pile is sent to the discard pile, yep. And since Bunny was the most common suit, it is now the new outcast. There's more than one way to crusade. Rather than move from an outcast clearing and battle in a neighboring clearing, you can also battle in the outcast clearing itself. Do so now to protect your garden. We also can just move and choose not to battle in the destination clearing. There's another option available to the lizards, which is something I did not know uh, for a while. I actually learned that in the Woodland Warriors Discord uh, which has great conversations about all things Root 24-7. There's a link to it in the description if any of you guys are interested in checking it out. Alright, success. However, you lost a warrior in the battle. Remember, only warriors are lost in battles where you are the defender. Seek revenge by becoming acolytes. Use the sacrifice action three times to gain more acolytes. A lot of sacrificing going on. Use the recruit action to place another warrior near your gardens. Okay. Sure. And then let's recruit again to establish rule uh, in the bunny clearing here. So now we will this clearing. Nice. You have too many cards in your hand. Discarding two bunny cards will help to ensure that the outcast will become the hated outcast. Yep, so there's nothing currently in this card pile. So if we discard both of our bunny cards, we can influence the next uh, outcast suit. Being hated sounds bad, you say? No, no. The righteous are often misunderstood. Patience, you will see. Let's find out what the hated outcast does for us. Cats building a lot of workshops again. They did not discard any cards. 
So now it's the hated outcast. As foretold, the most common suit in the Lost Souls pile is the same as the suit of the current outcast. When this happens, the outcast becomes the hated outcast, reducing the cost of your conspiracies by one. Well, I like the little green flame it has on there to indicate that it's the hated outcast. The Lizard Cult welcomes new blood with open arms. Use the Convert Conspiracy to replace an enemy warrior in an outcast clearing with one of our own. So, poof, that cat is now a lizard. We must purify not only souls, but false monuments as well. Use Sanctify to replace an enemy building with a garden. And poof, that workshop is now a garden. Your knowledge of our sacred text is nearly complete. Score 12 points to prove your undying allegiance to the lizard cult. Sounds cool to me. All right, we can choose a ritual here. Let's take a look at the discard pile, see if we got anything interesting. Okay. So, at the end of this turn, we would be able to craft with gardens matching the outcast suit. So we're not gonna be able to craft anything in our hand. So, I think we wanna go ahead and score with this Nos card. Yep. And then sacrifice a whole bunch. Boom, boom. Boom. Gain three acolytes for next turn. And then, uh, we unfortunately can't actually, actually discard this card. That's a shame. I was gonna say we could discard this card and tie the Lost Souls so that it would revert back to Hated. We don't really have any way of influencing it this turn. And rather than uh, just leave the card, we can use it to recruit establish our rule in this fox clearing here okay no crafting available all right we've got to discard cards okay so we can discard now we can discard hmm the fox card and this duplicate royal claim so the reason i did that is now it's a tie and i got to keep my bunny card for scoring my bunny gardens on the next turn so uh, as long as the Marquise doesn't craft anything or have to discard a card we will keep hated outcast oh they did they did discard something what did they discard what did I miss tax collector okay all right so we're gonna go ahead and choose a conspiracy and I believe yeah, so we have the ability to score both of these and get to 12 right now. Let's see if there's anything more interesting we can do before that. We can go ahead and sacrifice a bunch. We don't really need the Acolytes, though. We can... Okay, so what, what we could look at doing is... Um, sanctifying here. But we only have three Acolytes currently, so... I would probably actually hold on to the Acolytes this turn and just do a couple more sacrifices and then after this turn maybe not hold on to so many bird cards. Having three bird cards seems like a bit much. But yeah, let's just go ahead and... Oh, wrong but Oh, we're in Conspiracies, that's right. Skipping Conspiracies. Sorry, I have not used the um, Lizard UI on digital before. This is my first time playing with them on digital. So we're gonna go ahead and choose our score ritual to complete this tutorial. The lizards are arguably the most difficult faction to grasp when you're first starting to play this game, um, both playing as them and against them. So if you guys want me to make a strategy guide detailing some of the tips and tricks to how to get a win with this faction, let me know. And in the next video, we're going to be covering the 
other faction that was introduced in the Riverfolk expansion, the Riverfolk Company. See you guys then.